Hello, my name is Tom Abbott and I'm an associate here at Partum and Associates. Uh, my focus of my practice is on writs and appeals, otherwise known as post-conviction work. Um, to start off with, I want to talk to you about appeals. And I want to focus on the timelines because when it comes to appeals, there's nothing more important really than the deadlines themselves. Um, after your trial, you have 30 days in which to file what we call a notice of appeal. Uh, this lets the court know that you are going to be proceeding to a higher court, one of the uh, 14 numbered courts of appeals, to have certain trial court errors reviewed uh, from a legal standpoint. Uh, although there is some basis where you can argue the facts, you need to keep in mind that this process is going to be focused more on the legal uh, rulings of the court. Whether or not evidence should have come in, should have been excluded, suppressed, whether or not things were properly authenticated, things like that. Now, in filing that notice of appeal, it has to be done within 30 days. However, there are a couple of exceptions and this is where things can get a little bit confusing. First, if you miss the 30-day deadline, you have 15 days in which to file a motion to extend that deadline. So, uh, assuming that you get that in, you can actually have up to 45 days in order to get your notice of appeal to start the process going. Uh, if you miss it, it depends on what kind of case you have. If you have a civil case, that's going to be the end of it. It's a very hard deadline and they're not going to hear your case because you missed those deadlines. With criminal, it's a little bit different because you do have an appeal as a matter of right. Uh, and so exceptions will be made, but you don't want to push the court if you can avoid it. So it's best to try and get it in within that first 30 days. Now, uh, there is another exception, and that is when a motion for new trial is also filed. Uh, you have to be careful with this because the exception is only triggered if the motion for new trial is filed first. If you file the notice of appeal first and then try and file the motion for a uh, new trial, you're going to have a bit of a problem because these things are going to be trying to move simultaneously and they really can't. So best practice is always to go ahead and file the motion for new trial first if that's the route you want to go. On the motion for new trial, you have the same 30 days in which to file it. However, um, there will be no opportunity to uh, amend that motion for new trial after that 30 days elapses, which is one of the things that makes motions for new trial a little bit more difficult because you've only got 30 days to investigate an error, get it prepared, get it filed, and then you'll be able to argue it. Uh, and you won't have any wiggle room to fix any discrepancies in your investigation or anything like that. Um, assuming you do file that motion for new trial within that 30 days, um, you are going to get an extension on your, the filing of your notice of appeal. Uh, whenever you file a motion for new trial, the court has a very hard 75-day deadline in which to deal with the motion for new trial. Um, after 75 days, whether it was resolved or not by the trial court, it is going, it is going to be counted as, uh, you know, lapsing uh, by, under the timeline of that 75 days. Essentially, the court loses jurisdiction at that point and the trial court can no longer do anything with it. So you have to get that motion for new trial resolved within that 75 days. However, back to our original point, if you file that motion for a new trial uh, before you file the notice of appeal, it actually gives you a full 90 days from the date of the judgment, not from the date of the motion for a new trial, um, but you have 90 days in which to file the notice of appeal. Uh, this can give you a little bit more time maybe to kind of explore some issues, add some issues onto the record, which can be very important depending on what you were trying to raise on appeal. Uh, because when you get to the Court of Appeals, unfortunately, you will no longer be allowed to add evidence to the record. Uh, and so the motion for a new trial can be one way to add a few facts. Maybe something didn't occur. Maybe the trial attorney missed an objection. Maybe didn't explore something. You want to try and get that 
that evidence on the record through the motion for a new trial. And so the court, understanding that, has extended it to uh, extended the timeline for the notice of appeal to 90 days so that you can resolve these things all together. Um, once, once you get the notice of appeal in place, it's then going to change the timelines up a little bit. Uh, the first people that are going to have timelines are going to be the district clerk for the trial court that you are in, as well as the court reporter. Uh, they are going to have uh, 30 days, uh, which they can get extended fairly easily in order to get their records in. Okay. Uh, once their records are in, it's going to go to the appellant, whoever filed that notice of appeal, um, and they're going to have 30 days in order to get their briefs in. Um, obviously, 30 days is sometimes just not going to be enough, so you can get extensions uh, to this by filing a request with the Court of Appeals that you're in. Uh, you want to be careful with these requests because some of these appellate courts have it set up that after so many requests are received, they automatically generate a letter that says that no further extensions will be granted. Uh, the first Court of Appeals is pretty notorious for this, um, and it's sometimes best to ask for 60 days on that first motion to extend than it would be to ask for just another 30, because typically, the, if the court is in that position, they're only going to allow you two requests. So you can sometimes get an extra 30 days if you file 60 days on the first one and then follow up with a second request for 30 days, bringing your whole timeline to 120 days in which to read a brief, or, well, excuse me, read the trial transcripts, the clerk's records, and generate a brief. From there, it goes to the opposing party, and, and they will have to do their, or submit their brief. Uh, they are going to be under the same kind of timelines. Uh, however, when, you, when it comes to the state, the courts can typically be a little bit more forgiving on deadlines. Um, they understand that the district attorney's office probably has a much larger caseload than any individual defense attorney, um, and therefore they sometimes get a little bit more forgiveness when it comes to asking for extensions. Um, regardless, you know, you want to make sure you're keeping up with these timelines and you're getting these things in timely because you don't want to have any problems with the Court of Appeals. Um, they, you know, are going to be reviewing your case and you don't want to run the risk of creating any kind of procedural bar by letting any kind of deadlines lapse.